Hello and full person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some new discoveries, and actually quite interesting discoveries, in regards to very mysterious objects known as blazers. The objects that produce some of the most powerful energy headed toward planet Earth, and the objects whose origin was not even known to us up until a few decades ago. In the beginning, all of these just seemed like extremely bright stars that for some reason produced very powerful X-rays or even gamma rays. Would this particular blazer even be the most powerful source of gamma rays in the entire night skies? But now the scientists understand them really well, and we know so much about them, based on a lot of the observations in the past and based on the comparisons with a very similar object, a quasar. Both objects have very massive black holes in the center that end up producing very powerful astrophysical jets, responsible for extremely powerful emissions coming toward us with the only difference between these objects really being the orientation of the jet toward us. So for example, for a typical radio galaxy, usually the jets are oriented in this way, and this is why we don't really see radio galaxies from far away distances. However, when the jets almost point directly at us, this is when we get a quasar, a very very bright object, but not as bright as what it can be, and that's if the jets are pointed directly at us, and this is in a nutshell a blazer. So something that would look like this. This is basically if you're right in front of the black hole. But you don't have to be right in front of it to see it from far away. These objects are visible from pretty much the edge of the observable universe. With all of this, a result of an unusual dynamo happening around the black hole that actually even today we don't really know how to explain. For example, one of the more recent discoveries suggested that the jets and very likely the accretion disk around the black hole are actually responsible for one another. The black hole and the gravitational effects from the black hole don't seem to play as much of a role. As a matter of fact, the black hole's gravitational activity is relatively limited compared to the effects we're observing. But the very powerful accretion disk and the torus around the black hole, that's very likely what produces these jets. The effects are very likely magnetic in nature, but all of this right now is really a mystery. And even right now the scientists cannot explain how exactly these particles accelerate to such ridiculously high energies and produce so many emissions. There is however one new telescope that was launched in 2021 that can potentially help us answer some of these questions. This is IXPE, Imaging X-ray Polarimetry Explorer. And it might have actually helped us solve at least one of the mysteries in regards to these very strange, very powerful objects with several other mysteries we are going to be discussing in this video, also solved by other studies as well. And one main feature that allows AXP to be different from other telescopes is its ability to measure polarization. The twisting of light that usually happens around very powerful magnetic sources or because of very intensive electric fields. But in this case it can measure X-ray polarization, something that couldn't be done very well before with previous telescopes being very limited. It's also not something we can easily see from planet Earth because polarization and a lot of other details about X-rays are usually absorbed by the atmosphere. But in this case, the scientists were able to observe polarization from a very famous quasar known as Mercarian 501. A quasar that's actually relatively close to us, approximately half a billion light years away, that like so many other similar objects, is essentially a very massive black hole in the middle of an elliptical galaxy, also sometimes referred to as BL LAC, or BL Lacerta object, Objects that have quite a lot of activity, which sometimes is also periodic, and also have quite a lot of polarization as well. These objects are named after the first such object, discovered back in 1929. An object that the scientists believed was a variable star at first. It was actually changing in brightness quite a lot. You can actually see its luminosity curve right here, with the changes in just a few decades. But later on the scientists realized that something else is going on here, eventually realizing these were actual massive galaxies pointing their jets directly at us. But in this study the scientists did discover something really intriguing. They actually discovered that the polarization seems to be different depending on the frequency. The X-ray light was very polarized, more polarized than optical light, which was also more polarized than radio light, with the overall direction being similar and only the magnitude being different. So low energy light or low frequency light was a lot less polarized than high frequency and high energy light which kind of implied one thing. It meant that the light was being polarized at different times along the jet. But in order to become polarized, it had to be affected by something extremely powerful electromagnetically. In this case, very likely some kind of a powerful shock wave. And so it seems that very high energy particles inside the jet 
collide with the shock wave propagating away from the center, and as the shock wave is being crossed by these particles, they become accelerated by extremely high energies within the shock wave. With high energy particles becoming accelerated and polarized much sooner, and thus possessing more polarization. Although obviously it's not entirely clear what produces the shock wave itself. If it's somehow related to the black hole and the activity in the center, the actual origin of this particular phenomenon is definitely not understood. But the scientists do also provide an analogy to what we're observing here. To some extent, it's similar to how water starts to behave when it suddenly encounters a waterfall. There's a lot more energy, there's a lot more turbulence, a lot more activity, which is kind of similar to how these shock waves change the activity of the particles coming from the jet. With another more intriguing analogy that you can actually explore in another video, kind of relating to what the scientists were recently able to produce using laser-based particle accelerators, where various shock waves can actually re-accelerate particles to extremely high velocities. And so it's quite possible that a similar phenomenon that once again you can learn more about in the video in the description may actually be re-accelerating a lot of these particles inside these jets, but obviously on much more massive scales. Here we're talking about scales of thousands and millions of light years across. With the sheer power of the jets themselves potentially being responsible for the formation of these shock waves, which then re-accelerate some of the particles within the jet, making it a kind of a self-sustaining mechanism which then accelerates these particles for very long distances, allowing these jets to grow extremely large. But at the moment it's not really clear. What is clear is that this is right now the best explanation for what we're seeing right here, and would also explain why we're seeing so much variability and so many powerful emissions coming from these objects. And since this is the most active gamma ray object, and actually the highest energy gamma ray object in the night skies, this may finally explain what's actually going on here. The subject is actually known to flare up dramatically and increase its luminosity in just sheer minutes. And so whatever happens here is definitely mysterious. But it also seems to possess a bit more variability in terms of weeks. There seems to be a periodic activity every 23 days. And to the scientists this implies that maybe this is actually a binary black hole system with two massive black holes orbiting around one another every 23 days. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but if true, it would make it another one of blazers that seem to contain binary black holes, massive black holes. As a matter of fact, one of the most massive discovered, the object we discussed a few years ago, OJ287, is another blazer relatively far away from us that actually contains two supermassive black holes. One is ultramassive, a black hole that's nearly 20 billion solar masses, and a black hole that's about 150 million solar masses. And because it's also a blazer, Maybe having two black holes is what actually makes these objects so different. This object is still quite mysterious, but very recently the scientists were able to, for the first time ever, observe the center and the jets coming from this particular region with extremely high resolution. Here's actually what this region and what the jets look like. And because many of these objects seem to contain black holes that are billions of solar masses in terms of the actual mass, with many of them also being extremely variable, but also extremely bright, Maybe, by definition, a blazer is actually a binary black hole system. In other words, the activity here and the variability might be created by a partner orbiting around a central massive black hole. Or at least they represent a type of a blazer, the ones that we've been seeing so far. And also the ones with extreme polarization. But these are still brand new discoveries and brand new suggestions. It will probably take a few years before we can definitively find out what's happening in the middle of these objects, how these jets are formed, and why they have such unusual effects unseen in a lot of other similar objects, specifically quasars. And because this telescope has only become operational less than a year ago, we're definitely going to be hearing more about these objects in the next few years. And so once the scientists discover something else about blazers in general, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, check out the links and previous videos in the description below, subscribe, share this with someone who wants to learn about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.